What's up, you guys? Welcome back. Today we got another episode of the In and Out of Pocket Podcast with Josh Drum Class. We got a legend, another legend in the building. He's one of, the, he's the reason why I started wearing 4XL T-shirts. And <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, and I, and after Gospel Chops, I was I was on one. I was on one. Man. But uh, yeah, the legendary Thomas Pridgen. Is in the building. He's in the How classroom, you y'all. Man, Thank you, Josh. Pre- I appreciate you, bro. Man, I appreciate you, man. Yeah. This is this is crazy. This is crazy. Um, yeah, so we we'll start with like the first question, obviously, that I'm gonna ask you is why drums? Like, was there like have you even played any other instruments? And if so, not, what made you go really. with drums? Okay. Well, uh, I was just over church, bro. Like I just went to church. Like I went to church. Like probably f- sometimes we had church like four times on a Sunday. You know what I mean? We had the eight o'clock, yeah. the eleven o'clock, the three o'clock, and then my church was big, so we had an eight o'clock. So I was just at church all the time. And then my grandmother, she was a piano player at the church, um, and it was just the most, you know, I think the most coolest thing to do. And she also sung in a bunch of community choirs. So okay. I was at church a lot, you know, and it was just a, you know, a thing to do. They had tried to get us in the youth choir and I started being the drummer in the youth choir. And so I was See, playing at six, you know what I mean? I, w- I wish I had that. I like, I could, my cousin was on drums at the time. So I had to be in the youth choir. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't, yeah. Uh... Yeah, it it wasn't until they gave me that green light during rehearsal that I was able to get out that choir. But um, man, okay, so started in church, and uh, like, okay, do you remember the kit you were playing? Uh, not really. But when I when I grew up, I mean, maybe yeah. I think when I was the first drum set I really had was like a Toys R Us kit. Um when Toys R Us was around. And then I, I graduated to a Remo Junior Pro, which a lot of, act- I've seen a lot of people actually had that. That was like a, like an old Remo drum set that you could change the drum heads. And then th- I think that was really cool because you could change the drum heads. And at that time, that was really rare at the kids kit. And then after that, it was just, you know, the Pearl Export that comes at the, as the five piece. It was like 600 bucks. And yep. then, it, you know, it had the extra two toms that you could buy separately for 300 if you hear a baby in the background that's oh, yeah, all good. watching trolls <laughs> he's over there watching trolls um but <laughs> yeah he'd be over there acting like it's a football game but uh yeah it's like and then i just you know i started seeing like you know modern drummer and you see the ads for the new pearl i was a pearl addict just because i went i grew up in church and i was the the most basic church drums you had the little piccolo you know mm-hmm. what I mean? You had yeah, that was, the, that seven, was the standard. You know what I mean? The <laughs> seven by twelve. You know that Dennis Chamber snare. So we had all the pearl signature snare. So I was a pearl guy when I was a kid. Yeah, I think that's the answer. It's just you know it was just the most you know most entertaining and exciting thing to gravitate at church at that moment of my life. When it comes to like what age people started noticing, like yeah, this is what he's doing. Um, I think people started noticing what I was doing when I was young. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I kind of was progressing faster than a lot of people, and um, my grandmother got me drum lessons. So I was coming to church doing you know off the splash fields like Dave Weckl because I had serious moves and I had you know master plan from Dave Weckl. I had Dennis Chambers videos. I had. I was going to drum oh, stores. Man. I was okay. I, I, I was more um I was more up on what was going on outside of the gospel realm. So I was bringing a lot of that into church. I'd bring a double pedal to church, and people be like, "What is that?" You know. So okay, I think uh, it happened pretty much early on that I felt like you know, and then my grandmother actually was um she was singing in the community choir, like I said, and uh, the community choir was Northern Cal, and that was like the big you know community choir out here. And they were affiliated with GMWA. So I started going to GMWA when I was like nine. And so I was in church. But then next thing you know, I'm at GMWA. So I get to meet, you know, all the guys from New Jersey and everybody from all over. Craig Hayes and Corey and Hmm. all the people played in the youth choir. So I was starting to be inspired by not just local drummers and 
in the church realm. And then I also got to look at like the people were mining drummers. So I was looking at Dave Weckl and Dennis and Omar Hakeem and Will Kennedy. I just was getting more information at the time. Take me to you drumming in high school. What was that like? Uh, well, in high school, I was already before high school. I was in the middle. Uh, I was in a middle school band. I think I was like 12, 13. By that time, I was already playing on all the GMWA youth records. So by the time, like I started, I think my first time I played on the record, I was like 10. I played on the GMWA. I want to say it was like Chicago. I was like, dude, I was like nine years old, bro. Like, and then, so by the time I got to high school, I was fully with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, okay. My yeah. high school, <laughs> my high school, we had um, Ambrose Akamusery, John Finlayson, Charles Altura, who plays with Chick Corea, who was playing with the late great child. Uh, uh, we had uh, Francis Starlight, who produced a lot of stuff for Kanye, uh, Mike Allberg, Justin Brown. We were all in the same jazz band. Oh, so, wow. Okay. Yeah. So we basically, before we went to, um, before we got to high school, we all met each other at jazz camp. So I went to Stanford jazz camp when I was like nine or 10. Blaze, can you stop? So we all were just like, we in here tripping. Yes. Already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Come on, don't be in this interview. And so, yep. <laughs> so uh, he like, nope. He playing drums yet? He playing drums. He playing okay, yep. keyboards. He doing everything. You know, I was just involved with everything like you know i was going to ymp which is a big summer program here in the town of, um in the bay area it used to happen and the leader was bill bell he's a legendary jazz piano player so i was already going to jazz camps by the time i got to high school and so when we got before our high school the guys ambrose john they all went to ymp also they was like man you got to go to high school with us so we all lived out the district i lived in a in like maybe 20 minutes away um, okay. Charles Altura lived in Danville, which is almost 40 minutes away. And so a lot of us, what we did was we would either move to the same city or we would change our district on our, um, on our, on our water bill or our power bill. So we all would like Justin lived maybe 30, 40 minutes from the school, but we uh -huh. all changed our, our addresses so we can apply to the school because they had a crazy jazz program. Joshua Redman went there. Benny Green went there. Um, a lot of it's just a, a historic jazz school for high school. Hold on, hold on. So, so this is that's what y'all did to get in the same school. Yeah. The, what, hold on. Okay. Well, that was the only way to get in the school. It's it's a it's a school that the school is basically like maybe a half a mile away from UC Berkeley. So uh -huh. like we could walk. Is the school had off campus? So after after class, you could walk and go. You can go home and come back. You know, they didn't care. So it was off campus, had a lot of freedom. It had a lot of art programs. So like it, a lot of a lot of big people that are right now went there. David Diggs from Hamilton was in the jazz band with us. It was a lot of people that's just been at this school because uh, it's only one school in Berkeley. And Berkeley is a college city. So mm -hmm. we all we went to Berkeley High. So I went to Berkeley College of Music and I went to Berkeley High School. So a lot of us know each other from high school and okay. our high school, our high school used to also travel. So, um, in the summertime, my first year in school, we went to Japan and then the second year. And when we went to Japan, I'll just fill it in. When we went to Japan, uh, we stayed with other schools and other students who played music also. And then the next year we went to Italy. So me and Justin Brown running around Italy, talking to all these girls, bro, we was going <laughs> ballistic, bro. And so like, that happened and we just always you know we played a, a lot of jazz competitions so um we played against a band called rio which is another school and they had a great jazz program look at blaze back there then we mm -hmm. had um <laughs> then we played against you know the la get down so you would see us and i let him tag on that wall back there <laughs> and then we have um Man, we had, you know, we, our jazz band would go and play the same festivals as like Kamasi and Thundercat and Ronald. They lived in LA, but our schools were traveling to the jazz competitions. Yeah, so we played man. a lot of jazz, like, you know, big band competitions. And we have our combo, which is have like four people. So we were traveling a lot as a band before, you know, even college. That's crazy. 
Yeah, that dang man. <laughs> yeah, man. Me and Justin Brown go back, man. We used to cut school together. Like you was talking about me and him used to be like, forget six period, bro. We about to go to the house, and we used hey, to just shit. That, that's that's one of the benefits of being a triplet. Like I had, right. I had to, I had the smarter brother fill in. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that so cool, bro. worked beautifully. Oh man, that's okay. So, and you, uh, what age were you when you went to Berkeley uh, College? Uh, okay. So after I got, I got a full ride to Berkeley when I was 15, I had my grandmother who was riding with me and my mom is very open. You know what I mean? Yeah. So my grandmother was always also a musician. So, you know, if I said I wanted to do something, they were more, more, you know, people know my grandmother. A lot of people know my grandmother from the music game. So, um, I just was, um, I was just, I just had ideas and I knew what I wanted to do very early. It's, I know people like to be like legend, but I was really just serious. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. when I was 15, um, before that, I went to a Berkeley School of Music, had a camp. Like they used to have a summer camp. And um, so I met a lot of people at the Berkeley camp. You know, I met, you know, Nicole Hurst and Bridges, Sarai, people who sung with Justin Timberlake. We all was in camp and as kids. And mm -hmm. then, um, then, um, so I knew I wanted to go to Berkeley when I was like young because people at high school was like, what college do you want to go to? And I couldn't, I had, I think one time I did this thing, this church thing, and this guy from Miami, and one of, one of the Miami colleges was like, man, we'll give you a full ride because they saw I could play drums. And, but I don't know any musicians who went to Miami. So mm -hmm. I would look in the magazines and my favorite drummer is Vinny and, you know, Terry Bozio, all of them went to Berkeley. And I went to, I also went to MI one time with Dennis Chambers. Dennis Chambers was here and we hung out and he asked me to come to MI and open up at a drum clinic. So I went to MI before. So I knew what MI was, but I've been hearing all these stories about Berkeley. So when I told my grandma, I was like, where are you going to go? I just said Berkeley. I just threw a place out. Mm -hmm. And um, she just helped me to get an audition. And I walked in there and I just I just did what I did and I got a full ride at 15. So um, you know, my my that was like sophomore year. So my junior year and senior year, I was just being a fuck, I was just being a tyrant, bro. Because I knew I was going to college. You know what I mean? So yep. uh when I went to school, I got out of I got out of high school. Man, I was gigging with boots from the coup. Um, Boots Riley is like, you know, a legend, bro. He'd been doing a bunch of movies, man. But when I was 16, 17, he took me out on tour. That was like one of my first tours at like a, a but like a bus tour when I was like 16. And I just remember, you know, I'm graduating. Oh, I'm going, I'm supposed to go to the prom and I just ditched the prom because I'm gigging. Like I didn't go to the prom. I didn't go to none of that. Yeah. I'm and then so right after school, um, right after school, I just man, I didn't know if I was going to go. And like everybody from the area, all these drummers and people was pissed because they was like, this man ain't going to go to school after all that. I was like, I'm on tour. <laughs> I remember I was like 17 when I graduated and I'm going to Canada. Like we going to Canada for a show and I get to the border and they like, do you have your parents' permission? <laughs> I was like, no. Uh. <laughs> I like, I like, I like, I call my mom. I like, yo, I like, mom, I'm at Canada. Can I go to Canada to do this gig? She like, yeah. And then I just go to Canada. <laughs> and so like, I, I, I took a year after school, like well, I took a semester after school to, um, to, see, you know, to, to, to gauge if I want to go. So I went to school in January of like, I want to say I graduated 01. So I went to, I think 02, that was my first year at Berkeley, that January. And it was the coldest winter of all time. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's Boston, though. Yeah, man. When you auditioned, um, what was the audition like? Because I know, like, I've had experience. I auditioned for Berkeley twice. And, mm -hmm. like, um, like, is it, was it different then as far as what they wanted to mm -hmm. see from you? Man, I think pretty much all these school auditions are the same, bro. They just want to see if you can play. So they're going to be like, play a funk beat. You know what I mean? Play a swing yep, yep. beat. Read this chart. Oh, let's do some some rudiments. Let's let's uh let's see if you can play a shuffle. Like just they'll throw something at you to see if you have more than just the normal things drummers have. Like everybody can play a pocket, but 
Can you play the shuffle? Do you know what a shuffle is? Just to gauge you. Mm-hmm. Um, man, bro, when I was at Berkeley, it was when I was about to leave, bro, I was auditioning the teachers with the the per- percussion dude. I left Berkeley early, but I left p- partially because of this reason. <laughs> this dude called me in his room. He's like, oh, did, can we sitting in there? He's like, how you like him? I was like, he all right. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, well, <laughs> we trying to get him to be the teacher. I was like, man, I'm auditioning the teachers, nigga. I'm out of here. Like, <laughs> oh, right wow. there, you know, It's all the same. Auditions are the same, man. They just want to see if you can play. And it's not like a gig audition where it's like they plan with you. You know, they they generally want to get good students in because Mm -hmm. the good students, you know, inspire other students that are maybe not good or even maybe are good to come to the school and spend their money. Yeah. So they give they'll give uh, they'll give a couple people a full ride to get a max amount of other people who are inspired by this one good person, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I got denied twice, but it's, it's you know, it was all it's all good because it it's was, expensive, uh, bro. It's expensive. I, yeah, I heard a full ride, bro. It's like it's yeah. insane. All right, let's get this question out the way. Okay, I accept. I accept every drummer. So, what is your definition of pocket? Oh, that's tough, man. It's all sorts of different kind of pockets. Okay, yeah. so pocket pocket is like a rock pocket is you know loose. And it's almost like you barely can play. And then, mm-hmm. like, the Chris Dave pocket, you know, the Jay Dilla pocket is when you sound like you're drunk as shit. <laughs> and then you got the you got the the Latin pocket where you got, you like an octopus, where you can play, like, all sorts of things in every part of your body. Yeah, every and limb is got, doing something different. Yeah, it's like, yeah. it's all it's all a different pocket. Right now, certain pockets are just trendy. Like, it's just trendy to, like, I don't know. People want to sound mad lo-fi right now. And, uh, you know, I think that's cool. Look, he found another thing with noise. Yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, he is a musician, bro. <laughs> so, um, and so, like, uh, I think it's all sorts of different type of pockets. I think that um, music is one of those things, man. It's like, it's so subjective, man. And people, people tend to gra- gravitate towards... Um, they tend to gravitate towards things that get positive um, feedback. So if you see somebody doing something, you might not even like it. But after a while, you just be like, I like it too. It's like you see a girl and she ain't that fine. And next thing you know, she grow on you. And you're like, damn, she kind of is fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, no, she ain't, bro. You just been seeing it so long. Now you just used to it. Your you eyes, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, your, your eyes got refocused. This man said. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, now you playing drums. I promise you, bro. Look, see, you got it. You don't got no kids, huh, Josh? No, 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 not at the moment. Oh, yeah, don't do it right now, bro. You got you be on a mission. <laughs> Come here. Come talk to Josh. Uh, but yeah, it's like, I don't know, man. It's like a lot of different. Then you got the country pocket where mm-hmm. it's like, you know, you got the big snare and you want to sound good in the arena. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I think it's all different. I don't I don't have a problem with or you got the church pocket, you know what I mean? The yeah, church that's... pocket the church pocket is when the drums are super tight sounding and mm. you know, church drums is is just com- comedy to me, bro. I just I I crack up at it cuz it's so many small Man, I had I used to take lessons from in Dougal Chancellor, me and Ronald, we used to be taking lessons from in Dougal. And one of the things he said, he was like, man, if it's a long sound in the music, why would you play a long, a, a short crash? And if it's a shortened sound, why would you play a long cymbal? And I was mm-hmm. like, huh. So I, when I listen to, you know, gospel, I just hear a lot of short sounding things from the, 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 you know, I think now fools are putting the max amount of splashes I've ever seen on a kit just to play church music. And so, and it's different because rock, it's no splashes. And so you have to kind of like adjust how you play because you have, you don't have these short notes that sometimes don't even equate to much music. It's just a filler, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you have to like place your feels way different because you don't have these little ass notes that you can hide your lack of vocabulary with, you know what I mean? You're playing bigger yeah. drums. So, uh, you know, it's all sorts of different type of pockets, but, um, 
I don't know, man. I think that I think now we're in this place where people are, you know, just want instant gratification and they like to they gravitate towards things people deem to be it. You know what I mean? So And they and it's kind of like the only thing they 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 choose. Like uh I'm in I'm on this side of the drum community where like pocket is one way. And I I'm like that's why I'm like I'm glad you said what you said cuz it's like <laughs> it's deeper than that because it's it's multiple things that you can you can do under pocket like it's yeah. a, it's a it's different responsibilities for different type of music i mean ultimately if we're not talking about just playing drums by itself pocket is just making the music feel good yeah you know what i mean even if you're yeah. playing you know something very complicated like you know you got bands like lorna shore and this dude is doing 64th notes on the bass drum, but it's still pocket. You know what I mean? It's just a different type of pocket, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, you you def- knocked it out the ballpark with that one. There's no point of going back to that. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Okay, so who is the who's your most favorite artist that you worked with? Favorite? Um, yeah. I like people for different reasons. Like, you know, like I appreciated my time in the Mars Volta because it allowed me to like understand possibilities. And, you know, I feel like I went from Keisha Cole to Christian Scott on some major shit. Keisha Cole, Christian Scott to Mars Volta. When I got to Mars Volta, they was like play crazy as shit during the verse. And I was like every other place I've ever been. I remember I was I was doing a I was supposed to do B2K. <laughs> and nigga, okay. before <laughs> back in the day, bro. We do rehearsals, we do rehearsals. And like, you know, I remember just walking in there and what's that nigga name? Kevin Randolph. That nigga was like, Oh man, you got all these symbols. I, and I let him do that for a couple of days. He'd be like, oh, you got all these symbols. I'm like, nigga. You know, I did not say something. But, okay. you know, it's like, it's like, it's like in those worlds, you have these people who are so, so, um, you know how church people is, man. They be stuck on their ways, bro. They be, you know, they 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 they'll be they'll be wrong to a fault. You know what I mean? And yeah. and yeah. like I don't I don't really I don't really vibe with that all the time. So and but when I was with the Mars Volta, they was like, nah, we want you to do these things you ain't supposed to do. And that was like crazy for me because that started making me turn all the way up because I already <laughs> wanted to turn all the way up because when I was in jazz band in high school. Them niggas was like church people. You know, the jazz dudes is like church people too. You know, they like, put this tie on. Put your suit on. Oh, man, don't talk like that. Play at this volume. You know what I mean? And so, like, I be tired of that shit. You know what I mean? Because music is supposed to be a creative outlet where you can express yourself in the fullest way you can. I went to church, and I used to remember, come as you are. You know what I mean? (laughs) Come as you are. The moment nigga I come as I am, a nigga gonna be like, bro, you got shorts on? Back in that time. Back now, niggas Uh is wearing fucking jean hats and all sorts of stuff on stage, and Every drummer got a hat in church. But when I was a kid, fools wasn't wearing hats in church on the drums. I give it up to like drummers like, uh, you know, like uh, Willie Jones and um, even Brian Blade and, uh, you know, Elvin back in the day. And, you know, even sometimes, you know, uh, Steve Jordan, like the dudes who can play in suits, I give it up to them. But I think a lot of, um, I think a lot of people just see wearing a suit as prestigious. So they think that's like a thing. But they don't realize, you know, Dick Gregory said it best. He was like, the mob, these 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 politicians that are super corrupt, these these um these preachers who are are liars or you know, like you know, children and these weirdos, these they they all wear suits too. These these business people who take yeah. the world over, they they think it's prestigious, but all the people who doing dirt, they wear suits too. So it's like yeah, it's like it ain't that prestigious, my guy. I just feel like you know. I think for me at this this moment, I understand it, but like, uh, I just don't like being pressured to do things that I don't want to do. Like if I feel like wearing a suit, great. You know what I mean? If the gig calls for a suit, I have the choice to do it. But if church is supposed to be come as you are. And it's supposed to be about God. I don't think God really cared, my nigga. I think I don't think he like, oh, nigga, that tie ain't nice enough. You know what I mean? I don't think he cared, bro. 
I just can't see it. You know what I mean? Because I I'm hearing about a nigga who was just talking to like homeless people and people on drugs and prostitutes. I cannot see him caring about your suit. But yeah, I yeah, also in the aspect of giving him your best. But I don't think that's my best, dude. Because I ain't even comfortable. I should be comfortable in front of God. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's such a weird, <laughs> it's a weird topic, bro. It's true though. It's like, golly, let people be themselves. So yeah, it's like, yeah. I just, I had that energy. So I love that about the Mars Voltas. They just let me actually be free. And I don't think, I think if they never did that, you might see me being a pop drummer. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I'm very thankful for that. You know, just them just allowing me to just like, Bro, take your shirt off, nigga. Go get a gong. Let it go. Smoke on stage. You know what I mean? Because that that turn that shit the fuck out. You know what I mean? And a lot of people don't know how to turn it out. Some people really know how to turn it out and have a party. And some people don't. And then I I appreciate playing Residente because of um his overall outlook on politics. And I like that he's willing to put himself out there um politically sometimes he's fucking wrong as hell but at least he's out there and he's doing his thing and i appreciate that because he's using his voice um same with boots boots riley when i was playing with boots he had this album cover where he was blowing up the twin towers it was like that was the album cover that i was on that tour and so he was getting death threats and all sorts of shit this is like i think this dude in 2001 is when the twin towers actually blew up so his album cover was already that. He already had that on the album when that shit happened. It was insane. Mm. So people was like not feeling us or not feeling him. And, um, you know, I just love him because he's outspoken. You know, he's part Jewish and he speaks out about genocide in Palestine. He speaks out about all sorts of social issues. And I love that, man. That shit is like, to me, is like, that's how I am. I lost my page because I wouldn't get vaccinated. I was looking at niggas. They was like, they was like, how are you going to get a gig if you don't get vaccinated? I'm like, nigga, I've been getting gigs and you niggas didn't want to let me play at church. You niggas didn't want to let me do nothing, bro. I fought for this. You know what I mean? So I'm going to fight mm-hmm. for it too. I'm, I'm not going to get vaccinated. Nigga, you go get, you go get experimental jab, fool. So, um, and they took your page for that? Like Instagram? Hell yeah, because I was talking about it and I was posting about it. So wow. yeah, like right now, if I post anything politically, you get down, you get dem- you know they start putting you down in the algorithm. So I'm just usually I like people who are outspoken, and I like people who are loud and wrong, because at least you can actually have a conversation about it. You know what I mean? And you can agree to disagree. And I think that's what you know that's what God preached. You know, He preached like we don't all have to be the same person, but we all can come under this umbrella and have peace and love, and like. You know, that's what America stands for. You know, we all from different walks of life, all different religious beliefs, all different everything. You know what I mean? We all eat different stuff, dress different, but we all can come out here and live in a peaceful world, you know? So I like that. That That is what I like, you know? So I appreciate that from those artists. I like playing with uh, Eros because, man, he just taught me. Like when I got the Eros gig, I was like, how am I going to deal with these dudes? They don't speak no English. They all speak Italian. And I was like, I'm just going to do it. You know what I mean? I'm just going to make it happen. And um, I did it. You know, I, I did it. And and it, it set me up to be able to play with all sorts of artists who don't speak English. But I know how to translate music. Music is a different language. Um, yeah. So, And the time that I had with those guys was very special. Another person is like my, all my homeboys. Like I love playing with Free Nats. I love playing with Thundercat. I love playing with Christian Scott. Um, bro, pretty much everybody I'm playing with, you know, is my friends, you know, or like people that I've known since children or we went to college together. So I value those moments. Man, bro, I got so many moments with friends where I just be on stage crying because I can't believe we on stage together, you know? Um, yeah. And then... Uh, what else? I think uh, I love playing in Fever, you know? I just love, like, rock music and just being able to express myself in that world because I feel so free and I can play full volume and I can just do my thing. But I don't really do anything I don't like to do. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bar. <laughs> that's a little thing. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna go I'm not gonna go do some shit where I gotta, like, you know? I'm not gonna go and be on stage with somebody who is going to make me 
you know, look, feel or look like or do something that's not my vibe. You know yeah. what I mean? If the music is trash, I'm probably not going to do it. Oh, I also, like oh, I got to mention, I also like playing with Keisha Cole, man. That's my girl, man. She, um, the way she did that, man, she, I've known her since we was like 16, 15. She used to come to the studio. I used to be like, who is this girl? She used to walk in, be arguing with her boyfriend and come in there and write a banger. I'd be like, who is that? And when she got her deal, she just like took me all, she took me along to everything. You know, hmm. like she just was like, I'm going to take you. I was going to all her meetings with um, Ron Fair and everybody at the label. And man, I was seeing some stuff when it comes to how, you know, the music business is actually ran and how big the budgets are. And that, you know, that was a tremendous help because, you know, this this whole industry has uh, a lot of people who are willing to do things for nothing just because they are just happy to be there. And then you got a lot of people who prey on that. You got some people who know that people are just willing to take whatever. And so she let me go to places. So when I got older or got into bigger business, I started understanding how actually big these budgets actually are. So I knew much, how much more I was worth and than what, you know, I, I would have knew before. So I really appreciate her just like looking out for me as far as just bring me along to so many of these crazy meetings. So mm -hmm. I can't leave out Keisha Cole, man. I don't I don't think since y'all were like y'all pretty much grew up together, I, I don't have to ask if you if you had to audition for Keisha Cole or not. Nah, no, nah, we knew yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah. So um well how do you like if you had to audition for something, how do you prepare for that? It depends, bro. Cause like sometimes I, I, I can't even really think I don't even think I've ever got a gig because of our aud audition. Like I mean, I guess the Mars Volta the Mars Volta was probably the weirdest thing because they invited me to come somewhere. I didn't know I was playing. And then they, I was playing that night. And so I was jamming with them. And that's how I got the gig. So I guess that's an audition. But it, I mean, it's been other gigs that I've auditioned for. And I didn't even, I didn't, I don't even think I got the gig. You know what I mean? I don't think I, I think I, I did this one thing where I auditioned for Lenny Kravitz. And he asked me what I was doing. And I was having, I was having my other kid. And so I couldn't really leave. So, but I don't know if he was going to give me the gig, but he asked me what I was doing, you know? So mm -hmm. I haven't really had any really weird auditions, man. But if I was going to audition, I think the best thing to do, and I think this is just the best thing to do, period, with people, is just to ask them what they actually want from you. Because you, like, the dude, you know, the guy who called me for the Lenny Kravitz thing, I was like, what does he actually want? And he was like, he just wants to hear you play the music. I was like, okay, so he doesn't want me to play are you gonna go my way and then i go blah, blah, blah. <laughs> he wants yeah. to hear he wants to hear the the cliche cindy blackman that we know on the radio that feel and mm -hmm. so like uh not cliche but you know what i mean and so uh i got that you know what i mean like ah uh, dog uh-oh come on man take a little commercial break bro all right. <laughs> go. I did a community tab asking you guys, what do you struggle with when it comes to drums? And you guys sent me a ton of comments. And I just wanted to let you guys know my drum course is now live. And I covered pretty much everything in those comments. And I will be adding more lessons to that course. Make sure to check out everything. It'll be the first link down in the description box below. This is Josh. He's a sweet person. He's a sweet soul. A sweet person. This is Blaze. Blaze, what's up, Blaze? Say say hi. He like, all right. But yeah, so I mean, you know, you just never know what people want. So I ask, I'd be like, what do you want? And I also do that with artists. I'd be like, what are you actually looking for? And so I think that's a good way to approach audition. Cause if you know what they're looking for, then maybe, you know, like maybe you're underplaying, yeah. maybe you're overplaying, you know, yeah. maybe they maybe they want you to play quiet, you know what I mean? Maybe they you never know. That's cr that's actually crazy because like when you think about it and I don't think people ever thought of it like this like you're you're told like I know when I was in school and we were doing like mock interviews we were told to it's okay to ask questions in your interviews so like it makes perfect sense that if you audition and ask them what they want and literally like that that takes away you not knowing what to expect from the whole audition process I yeah it's just that. i think overall in this business people um just assume like yeah. you'll be like you'll be like you'll be like somebody be like i want you to do this gig you're like how much is it paying maybe like 500 bucks like great let's do it 
like me, I'm going to be like, oh, it's paying $500. I'm going to be like, when are you paying me? Mm, because I yeah. don't be wanting to wait no two to three weeks. You yeah. know what I mean? Yes. And so I think like transparency is very tough because people aren't really ready to have hard conversations. So, you know, I just be like, when are you paying, dude? Like I play with artists that are notorious for, you know, paying people late. And I'd be like, bro, listen to me. If you pay me late, I'm going to hate you. And they'd be like, <laughs> they'd be like Nigga, I'm so glad you told me that. I'm like, yeah, because I'm going to hate you. You know what I mean? It's going to it's gonna create resentment. And yeah. let's end that now. You know what I mean? I don't want to have that happen. And usually when you do that, you have um, good repertoire and relationships with people because they can they can feel your honesty, bro. They, and I think that's absolutely the most important thing. Um, if they can feel honesty, because then they know where you're coming from. They not like um, it's not a surprise. And I think if you, you know, you just be transparent. What's the, what's the worst gig that you've experienced? And I'm I'm talking like embarrassing moments. Not even if it's not something that happened on you, you with you on the drums, like in general. Yeah. I'll tell you about stuff that would happen to me. I've been on stage, man, and the um, we had this cable that was going from the computer to the screens. I'm mm-hmm. talking about giant screens, bro. And it had a short in like the adapter and the mm-hmm. screen would go out and we was playing to like 40,000 people. The, everything was going out over and over again to the point where we had to just be like, hey, we're going to make this show up. <laughs> I had that type of stuff happen. Uh, I had stuff happen like I fall off the drum riser. You know, I do some feel, stand up and fall off the drum riser. Um, I've had, you know, okay. <laughs> you know, I've had people like throw my shit in the crowd and while we not getting along, you know, uh, be like, bro, like, why as, would you? Yeah, wait, yeah, let's talk mean? about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they threw what, like, for what, for your symbols like, or something, like? Yeah, when I was in the Mars Volta, man, the the singer, he was like, what do you say? We were smoking in the bus, and he used to smoke, but he got into this place where he was having a hard time singing, having, a, mm-hmm. and then he was like. He was like, no smoking in the bus. And somebody else brought a joint in the bus and I smoke it and I get caught with it, but I'm not going to snitch on the homie. And mm-hmm. then he's just not getting along with me the whole day. And so he wouldn't talk to me. And he's just still a corny weirdo, you know, sh- weird shit. And it, bro, this is like one of the most hardest places to, to be because like when you when most people go to work, they get to go home and decompress from having to be with people. And we go to work and then we get in the bus with you. You know what I mean? We go to, we get, we get off the stage. We go get in the bus and then get on the plane. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, you can't really get away from people all the time. And so like, um, man, he would go and we'd be playing this hella crazy part. And this dude will be looking around my drums for shit to throw. Cause he would throw stuff in the crowd all the time. Mm -hmm. But he started throwing stuff in the crowd (laughs) And um, and then so he threw, he threw, he threw my drums in the crowd. I was like, bro, you cannot throw stuff in the crowd and not talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> so like, <laughs> you know, we I just be looking at it like you crazy, bro. But like, you know, I don't be really taking all this stuff that serious, you know. But that happened. Um, what else happened? Nothing crazy, bro. Like it's all like I, I take the good ones with the bad ones, bro. A lot of the bad nights is just a personal thing. People would be like. This was killing. And I'd be like, no, nah, I wasn't. And, you know, I'm the hardest. I'm harder on myself than anybody else is. That's why I can be harder on other people, too, because I'm hard on myself. Um, and um, I don't know. It's just that kind of stuff happening. Nothing nothing too insane. I mean, falling off anything while you're playing, that's, that's, that's the. <laughs> but you got to think like this, bro. I've been doing this since I was a little kid, bro. If that's, uh-huh. if that's all, you know what I mean? Like. Like, yeah, I mean, I mean yeah. <laughs> it's not that bad. I mean, I've seen I've seen our church deacon, he got on the drums for me cuz I had to go to the bathroom because my grandfather at the time would like start praise breaks randomly and it's mm-hmm. always up for the drummer to do it. <laughs> so said, like I <laughs> randomly. <laughs> bro, like it, it was this one time, it was this one time it was Bible study. 
I'm in the back of the church. I see him his leg moving. He getting excited. I'm like, I know he ain't about to just point at the drum. I'm, I'm no, I have to, I had to get out from the front. I had to run around the back of the church. Literally, I jumped on the drums last minute on the on the queue. The deacon wasn't his reflexes wasn't that good enough, so he fell. Like he he put too much pressure, I guess, on the kick drum. The throne broke. He fell backwards. Sticks flew in the air, and you just heard the church. Oh, yeah, yeah, that. That cannot happen to me. I'm I'm sorry. That yeah, yeah. I'm getting I up. Couple, I seen some stuff like that. I seen a couple organ a organ bench break a couple of times. You know, the big dude get on the organ and the organ just. <laughs> I seen that a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, okay. Man. Yeah. Hey, quick question. So, uh, it's it's referring to artists you played with. What was it like playing with uh, Juliet Luce Lewis? Juliet, uh, I never Juliet. played with her live. I never played with her. I was actually supposed to play with her the other day, and it got. I they ended up. I was supposed to fill in, and the drummer wanted to. He wanted, to, I guess, stay on the gig. But um, I mean, I was recording with her. Okay. And I I knew, man. Sometimes, bro, I be playing with people, and I don't even be caring who they are. Like, I don't even be thinking about it. Like, I, it's just. Like I had time. Like, when, for instance, I was in the house with Will Will Smith because I used to play with Jada Pickett. And I never took a picture with him. Like I just never was like, "Hey, Will, let's take a picture." I never. I just don't be tripping, bro. It's yeah, all I, the I, same. Yeah, he, I, it's all the same. It's all we working with people, and I'm just trying to make the best music with you. I'm not. I don't be really tripping off that. Um, but she's a sweet person, and I love her as actually like just her energy. And I wanted to play with her, and one day we'll play again. But I recorded on her first record, Juliet and the Licks. I think yeah, Licks and Juliet and the Licks. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know uh who Juliet Lewis is, that she's the uh she played on the hit movie The Other Sister. I didn't find out she was a musician until I saw her in the comments when you reposted my reaction video the very first time on okay. Instagram. I'm like, wait a minute, how she and then I just went down a spiral of doing all the searching. Do me a favor. What's okay. it if I was like completely tapped out? on what to practice and i'm like i'm doing i'm just being so repetitive every time i sit behind the kit what what what's a practice routine you would recommend man it's impossible to like have nothing to practice because we all got a dominant hand so mm. even if you go sit there and you be like I'm going to practice everything i do right handed left handed you got a lot to practice even if you said i'm about to uh, do everything I do right footed, left footed on a double pedal, you got something to practice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, I think what ends up happening is people are trying to get to a certain level. So when you're trying to get to a certain level, it's like this, man, I be playing 2K, right? I be playing, I, like, I, I love 2K. You got some dudes who will play the game and they don't care if they lose because they trying to get their player to 99. Yeah, I'm that person, by the way. And then you yeah. got some people who want to win, and they, they don't care if they get to 99, so they are playing every game like they got to be perfect, and they just screaming at everybody because everybody else <laughs> want to get to 99. Right. <laughs> and what, what they don't realize, bro, is that we're trying to get to 99. You're trying to win. You're not going to win that many being an 89. <laughs> like, get to That's 99. True <laughs> that's true that's true but it's all it's all like uh it's kind of like this it's like it's no way to go to the gym and get buffed the first day it's all yeah. about like it's all about steady 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 you know i don't know i don't know the exact phrase but just you know being steady and consistent. Being consistent yeah yep. you've been consistent and you don't even realize that you're growing so uh, I think people are trying to get to this level of how they see internet drummers they're like man he's so sick i gotta get there so they they mm -hmm. sometimes will skip you know practicing a double stroke roll, and but like me, I'm the type of person that like I have a lot of time on my hands, bro. So like I'll practice a double stroke roll just so I can play it better than you. You know what I mean? And then like that's a bar. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just a, I'm just a, I'm just I'm just like. Cause bro, I used to I mean I used to literally be at home because we didn't have any way to do this so. 
Mm -hmm. I remember I used to call fools on the phone. I used to call Eric Moore before FaceTime and be like, here it is. <laughs> He's like, what is that? You know what I mean? I call Justin on the phone. I'm like, hey, we couldn't see each other. We just hearing each other. So mm -hmm. I remember, you know, we always used to, even with Aaron Spears, I'm like, man, we used to go to GMWA and ship, you know, at nighttime after all the church stuff. And then I just remember being like, man, I got to practice because I know Aaron practicing and I'm about to see him in two weeks. You know what yeah. I mean? So <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I know you ain't getting no damn award at no GMWA shit, but like that's where, you know, my mind was. I'm sure other people had that same vibe. And we just was like, you know, and then so we had the energy where we were just trying to just be the best we can be. And like, I think that's, I still had that energy. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'd be, that's why, I mean, I honestly be posting like just a percentage of the stuff that I be actually working on just so when you see me, it's like, damn, this nigga is on a whole nother level than I thought, you know, versus you just maxing out and you posting the the whole 20 second clip thing is killing me, bro. I'd be like, bro, if you only could post 20 seconds, you ain't good, bro. I don't care what anybody say, bro. I'm always keep it a buck. I'm like, if it's just 20 seconds, bro, that other, that other five 20 minutes of you playing was trash bro ain't no way but that ain't no way that that's that's just the new social media algorithm with that because like the social media ain't got music in the title it ain't saying social <laughs> music media that's not music no i don't give a fuck like i don't be caring bro like these dudes can pretend like the internet is everything they can pretend the internet is everything but it ain't bro it's not everything bro it's not it's like it's like you still gotta be a human, bro. You still are doing an art, you know. It's still art, you know. It's like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if you only think of it as content, you are completely killing the whole art aspect. And that that other five minutes of you playing is actually the art part because that's the part where you have to intertwine with another human being. That's that part where you actually have to like make the soloist. That's that part where you gotta make the um, you gotta make the singer sound good. You know what I mean? That's that part where you got to make uh, that piano so solo sound amazing by maybe dropping down in a little bit of volume so you can hear the beginning of his solo. Or that part where you got to play the hi-hat real light so the bass player can fucking get his thing out. Because then when he's getting his thing out, maybe y'all got some interaction that, you know what I mean? It's music, bro. Like, I'm explaining music to you, bro. And the fact I got to do that is funny. It's, it's comedy, well, bro. Yeah. It's music. <laughs> That's, or, you know. or you know i think you can acknowledge that some people are musicians and some people are drummers and some people are just content creators nah some people are just straight drummers bro and well and elaborate I, on that because it's like you got people you got some dudes who they can they can play drums but they can't play music that's true and then you yeah. got some people who play music very well and then you'd be like, take a drum solo and you'd be like disappointed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like when I see, like, I'm not going to go ask Steve Jordan to play a drum solo. I'm not about to ask. I'm not about to ask uh, Thomas Lang nigga to play with D'Angelo. You know what I mean? I'm just not going to do it. You know? So it's like some people, and I'm not going to say they're not musicians. I just think that it's like a, Maybe you got twenty percent musician and eighty percent drummer, <laughs> or you got, or you got thirty percent. Hey, shout out to eighty twenty drummer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just think that it's musicians and it's instrument, it's instrumentalists. Like you know, even piano. You see people who are great piano players. I deal with it because I play with a lot of people, bro. I, I I played a jazz club here, and bro, some some of these dudes that come, they don't translate. It yeah. just don't translate. You know what I mean? On the internet, you'd be like, dang, you're fool killing. And that's a lot of people, you know? You'd be like, it don't translate on a stage. You know, maybe they stage is the room with a mic and a camera, but it just don't translate. So I, I kind of, I don't, it's, I'm, I'm actually probably marginalizing it more than I am. And you are right. It's content creators, drummers, and musicians. But it is a thing where some of these dudes can't play music, you know, yeah. or they can't create music. Or like some people, you, you, you ever see those singers? that can sing their ass off, but the lyrics is just trash. You'd be like, yeah. what are you singing about? You know what I mean? Or the people who got great lyrics, but they ain't got no vocals. It's like, yeah. we all ain't blessed with the same talents. I'll add one with, with the singers. They can <laughs> sing real good, but can't write their own music. They, write they no can't music. write their own song. 
Yeah, yeah. I, you, 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 you preach it. We ain't all blessed the same. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I don't try to. I don't try to disrespect people, but it is very telling when people who are supposed to be musicians are doing twenty second clips for the sake of social bro this social media shit bro it's not music i just don't i don't care i i, I would be a i'll be a traditionalist to the end bro it's okay i mean like, i don't think i don't I, I don't i don't know what the future is but i think a lot of guys would do well at some of this stuff but i just think that i think that this is just like when you see something all the time it starts to be a trend in your mind it's like it's like programming bro it's like they're programming you to like what you said it's like this is a new thing yeah, it's that. like, yeah, I guess, nigga, on a couple plat, bro. It's how many platforms is it? It's like four main platforms, five max. Oh, I thought, yeah. How many yeah. drummers yeah. is it? How many musicians in the world cater into five platforms? Six. Let's say internet. Let's say Spotify, uh, iTunes. Let's count that. That's seven places. That's all these people who are supposed to be artists catering to these small, small places. Where mm. when these play like MySpace, I remember MySpace. I used to create my little background and all that stuff. That's not here anymore. So it's no, like it's, it's Vine ain't here. Snapchat, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's surviving. It's places that don't always exist forever. So, but music, music will always exist over a trend. Bro. Like just the whole aspect of art and music, it will yeah. always be here over a trend, bro. It's been trillions of trends. You know what I mean? You know. So I just, I just, you know, I just hope I inspired the young kids to continue. Even if you're going to make 20 second clips, make sure you can play some music. Because I like music. <laughs> and I'm in it for the music. <laughs> make sure you can play some music. Click. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, I got another TV over here. I'm trying to put trolls. He over here. He ain't crazy, man. Yep, yep. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Speaking of drummers on social media and all of that and in person, who are some drummers that you're noticing that are up and coming and they killing it right now? Uh I think man, I don't know everybody's names, bro. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna hold you. Cause I don't <laughs> I don't good. be I don't know everybody's names. Um I don't know. The last video that I liked was from that kid who played left handed. He did a minor video. Uh, the okay. dude from Italy, the kid, the kid from oh, Italy oh, with the big uh, hair, John Luca. John Luca. Oh, John Luca. Yeah, yeah I like yeah. his last video. Uh, sometimes he does videos and it's not professionally recorded, and it don't translate that well. And I think that was a really good video. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's he's playing a full song. Um, I don't know, man. It's very, it's very hard, bro. I don't really be, I don't be really tripping off it, man. I look, you know, I'll see something and I'll see something. I'll be like, oh, that's sick. Or I like a drummer's vibe. You know, I like when, I like when people don't really try hard, but it's still amazing. Like mm -hmm. they ain't trying to make it be like a, a production. <laughs> you know, but it's, <laughs> it's sick. You know what I mean? Uh, it's a lot of drummers that I think they do cool stuff. Um, you know, it's more drummers I think are doing cool stuff. And are doing negative stuff, you know what I mean? Pouring milk on your face and drumming shit, that's all trash. But like uh yeah, but agree. it is some it is a lot of good music, a lot of good drumming. I'll say drumming on the internet. I yeah, think a lot of people, you know, I said this before, I think people re don't realize how many other people who watch social media, they don't do any of the things you do. Like it's like I I look at I look at a lot of things I don't do. Like I look at the cars. I look at I do cars, but I don't drive cars like these fools. I, I look at the skateboarding. I look at the cooking. Mm -hmm. I look at the fitness people, but I'm not a chef. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm just a, I'm yeah. a drummer who enjoys looking at people cook. You know what I mean? And like at the same time, when you start cooking stuff that's too out, like or things that I don't feel like, you know, a lot of expensive restaurants that use a lot of expensive ingredients, stuff I can't never find or I won't get. I won't pay attention to those cooking channels. But yeah. I'll watch somebody cook a burger. I watch somebody cook ribs. I watch somebody, you know, cook, you know, some some of the Asian dishes I like, like pho and ramen and all that stuff. But I'm not I, I'm not a, a cook. So a lot mm -hmm. of these drummers and musicians, not just drummers people who follow them don't play music <laughs> so yeah. i understand yeah. i understand the idea of entertaining but i don't be that's why i say it's drummers and it's musicians i don't look at them as musicians i look at them as a drummer, drummer. Yeah. 
Yeah. Y'all heard it. Yeah, this we we going deep. Pause. We we get we get we get no this. Diddy. No, yeah, that's the new one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um all right, so yeah, this is the last thing. No, it ain't. But uh we'll just we'll talk about this. So when it comes to and we'll have to stay on this long, no diddy. Okay. God. That's the worst one. That is just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the clip, y'all. <laughs> All right. So, well, um, real quick, when it comes to, hey, check this out because you you gave me this title for this podcast. When okay. it comes to people weaponizing your fame, for just weaponizing your fame in general. To get attention and all this stuff, the title of this podcast. Check this out. Hold on, hold up. I don't want to misquote myself. <laughs> <Hold on. laughs> all right, weaponizing your fame without the license to carry. Let's get it. Oh, I like that. I like let's, that. Let's, let's let's talk about it. I had it. Well, I last think night. I think we I think we have an issue just with like um. People know that you know. People know that you have some sort of fame and you might have a lot of people on the internet who are following you and they might not have so many. So mm -hmm. they know that if they say something about you, you know, it might get to you and then you can say something about them. And then now your, your fans and your following is like, Oh, let me go check out this dude he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, as how I am now, dude, we've been on here for an hour, but yeah. we was in person and Maybe I didn't know you and you were just as cool as you are. We could probably spend an hour just chopping it up, period. And yeah. that's just how I am, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, like, I'm a personable person. So sometimes I'll have interactions with people and they just can't wait to just, you know, get a clickbait moment to be like, oh, let me just say this, you know? And so, like, for me, I've seen this happen with a whole lot of people. And this is why a lot of artists are really sheltered because they don't never know what this person who is a fan is going to do. You know what I mean? You say something, they start... I've had drummers come kick with me and start hitting the record button, nigga, on the phone. I was like, bro, what, who does that? Like, I've been around so many drummers and let them give me all sorts of game. And I've never in my mind said, let me hit the click button and record this nigga Dennis Chambers saying something. Like, who does that? You know what I mean? But that's the world we live in. So, like, I don't know. But for me... I don't really care. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm going to turn up. Like, if you like, if you disrespect me, I'm going to disrespect you, your mom, your sister, your dog, nigga, everybody you love. I don't care because yeah. so, I don't have, I don't have, I told you, everybody I play with, everybody I work with is my friends. So they know me. <laughs> they know me. They got, mm -hmm. like, I'm not, I don't, you can't, you can't call my boss. You know what I mean? So, play, stop for a second. So I ain't tripping, you know? So, but it is a thing because you got a lot of, you know, you got people doing podcasts and they go in, they post your most vulnerable moments. Like I, my homeboy, he had a meltdown and they want to post it like, you know, everybody don't have a meltdown or a moment of bad. I've had bad times on stage where I cuss a nigga out, but it's not on film. You know, you got, you know, Draymond. Draymond knocked that nigga out. But if it wasn't on film or yeah. taped, nobody would even know. That's probably happening a lot, you know. But yeah. like now we live in this day and age where people they don't know you and they're fans of you and they want to judge you by these isolated moments. And it could be tough as an artist because yeah, people are weaponizing that you are famous, you know? And I think it actually does people disservice because now the social media is around, you have access to a lot of people. When I was a kid, bro, we used to talk about little John and Chris Dave, like they was mythical creatures. Nigga, we didn't know what they looked like. Yeah. We was like, <laughs> Like, people was like, I saw Chris Dave. I'm like, well, you know, if Chris Dave walked up to me, I wouldn't even know he was. You know what I mean? Or yeah. Little John. I'm expecting some little dude. You know what I mean? He tall as <laughs> hell. Right, like, right. like, so it's like, like they were mythical creatures of people that we just kept hearing and hearing about. And now you can see Little John and Chris Dave and actually write them. Mm -hmm. And that's a blessing. Yeah. But then you make it weird. Now you can't even, you, they won't even open up to you. And... 
it's just what it is but when you start disrespecting me and go crazy i'm just gonna go 10 times bro i don't care like i don't I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna act like i'm too good for it people be like you're too good for that man just turn the other cheek nigga i ain't doing it i ain't doing it <laughs> right i'm okay. meeting you exactly where you are yeah yeah it's like you go you gonna turn the other cheek with a roundhouse <laughs> bro i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go because i don't you never know like yeah i mean it's like a fight bro it's no fair fight you know what i mean like you know this dude he's like man i'm gonna come to your show i'm like i'm gonna kill you because <laughs> i don't ever know what's gonna happen that fool dime bag got shot on stage uh, so i'm not about to i'm not about to treat it like it's okay like i'm not gonna treat people who making weird accusations and threats i'm not gonna i'm not gonna treat it like it's okay i'm not gonna treat it like i'm a celebrity I don't see why I would do that. Yep, I will. I will say this to uh, <laughs> to piggyback on that, though, Daddy. But um, yeah. So when it comes to, and I'm talking directly to people that do that content. I've I've been on social media for over 15 years. I've seen, I've seen this come and go all the time. That no one that goes that route is ever successful. You just build a fan base of people that will that just like hating with you. They don't yeah, support circuit. you. They like they 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 not even if you post a pic you you do post positive at here and now again, they're not supporting that. They come back when you get negative again. Like yeah. it's 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 a lose lose scenario. Like it you gain nothing. You I really also gain feel nothing. like I also feel like in this game of just like, you know, music and then especially, you know, with the black the black crowd or community of musicians like i've always had people just share with me and that sharing wasn't always necessarily what i would consider positive at that moment you know what i mean like later on i've 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 had things happen where i was like man that kind of made sense i'm glad that happened but at the time i remember i was at nam show and little john was like he's like man you played all everything you played was super dope but it would have been cooler if you played it quiet. And most people would have been like, damn, I hate that nigga. But nah, for me, I was like, okay. And then next, now, now when I play, I could play large majority of stuff I'm playing at a very quiet range and a medium range and a medium high range and a high range. And so when you're playing these fields where it's like, now you got crescendo in the middle of your fields versus it just sounding like, you hear some people when it just sound flat, it sound like a Drake verse. You'd be like, bro, why does it sound so monotone? It don't have no hills and valleys. It don't have no mm -hmm. like, like go somewhere with it, like create a story. So like, I appreciate that moment. Or when some, one day I was playing at church and my grandmother was like, everything you played was dope, but you played it all on the snare. It'd have been cooler if you played the times. Or all in times I was in the community choir and he's like, you speeding up, you're slowing down, you're speeding up. You're slowing down. Now I'm hella conscious. Or mm -hmm. when I had, uh, you know, Kevin Randolph, one of the bars he had that was really good. He was like, bro, he's like, when it's sound check, when it's like all that stuff, don't play. People hate that. I was like, hmm. I just remember that when I was like doing Beach K, I was like 16, 17. I remember that. He was like, he was like, he was like, man, he's like, man, people hate that when you're trying to set up and do just like, blah, blah. I was like, all right. So like since then, I was young. Since then, when they setting up, I'd be like this. Mm -hmm. Homie be over there hitting cowbells and go, 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 go. they be trying to get, they be like, one, two, mic check, mic check. Go, 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 go. And I'd be over there chilling, you know what I mean? And yeah. that's why people like me on stage because I got etiquette, you know? And so like, um, we used to have a thing where you could share while people getting so in their feelings, you know? Like, I remember I posted something, somebody posted something, I'd be like, man, that would've been tight if you would've did that left, like left-handed and right-handed. And then they wrote me back in the back, they was like, no Diddy. They wrote me and they was like, <laughs> they wrote me and they was like, they was like, uh, what they say? Uh, they said, man, it was cool what you said, but I don't want it coming from you on my page. I'm like, oh, dog. So that's a large part of it is people's, uh, people's, um, People insecure, bro. They not willing to share, bro. They so used to a positive interaction. Like you never see nobody say, that was trash. Mm -hmm. You just see fireballs. You're like, everything is good. 
And it's like, I mean, you don't know how to gauge it because it could be like the best video of all time and the worst video of all time. And everybody be like, that was super cool. <laughs> like, all right, <laughs> everything cool. <laughs> so, so now we just don't share with each other like we used to. We don't, we don't like engage in inner in conversations and like, you know, uh, you know, Reggie, the bass player, he'll say something and niggas will be in the comments and say, he a hater. Oh, hater. It's like, <sighs> y'all are missing the bars out of this, you know? Mm -hmm. And I tend to just like, I tend to just not care and just either, sometimes I just shut up, you know what I mean? I just let niggas be whack, you know what I mean? But I shouldn't be that way, you know what I mean? Yeah. It shouldn't, we should all be trying to uplift each other and getting each other to a certain place because to be honest with you, black musicians is getting the least amount of money. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's people making a lot, a lot of money playing music. You know, and I don't see that always happening with us. So that's why I like, you know, the idea of being able to share information because people share information with me. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, 100% agree. I've definitely uh, had my share of people cr uh, giving some constructive criticism. I've taken all of that with, a, like, accepted it. Um, I've also ran into people and uh it's not even drum related it's just it, it's the it's the type of people that will give you constructive criticism in a field they didn't do any research in because it's <laughs> they, like they're so used to giving you criticism like okay so he should be able to take this too even though i i don't know anything about this field but you know he's accepted all this stuff before let me just and that that everything else is cool but if you ain't did your homework and you're criticizing on something that I've been doing for years, uh, it, it, there's no, like, I don't even know the word for it, but it's just, it's just, it doesn't, it don't make sense. It, it really Yeah. Doesn't. I mean, I think, I think, I think it's a level of, of, it's a level and it's a good balance of all criticism being okay. You know what I mean? I think you got to take it with a grain of salt. You know what I mean? I got people that say things to me and I'd be like, bro, shut up. Or, you know, you know, man, you would look good in that shirt. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we're going to cut it out. You know, it's just like, it's just, it's just, it's just, yeah, you got to take it with a grain of salt and not be so soft. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just saying that like, you, we, everybody got access to speak about their opinion. So it just sucks. Cause like me, a lot of things I say come off as trolling and I'd be dead ass serious. You know, I just, I'm just a funny person, you know, and everybody mm -hmm. has their way of speaking. That's why I spoke about how, you know, when he told me to wait, hold on real quick. Um, how, when he told me that, you know, it'd be cool if I played it quiet, he said it. I mean, you could have deemed it as fucked up, but like for me, like I, you know, not only was I open to it, I also am an admirer of Little John. So anything he says to me, I'm going to listen to him because especially at that time, bro, he was, he's done so many things that his, what he's saying is important, you know, and you take mm -hmm. it, if it applies to you, great. If it don't great, you know what I mean? But at least he thought to say something to you because now you, the OGs won't even say nothing to you. You won't get a comment from, you know, Dennis Chambers, and he'd be on the internet. You won't get a comment from Little John that's not, you know, him just saying, oh, great video. You know what I mean? Because he knows mm -hmm. people can't take it, you know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you be just cutting your whole quote off. I just be, cause, yeah, because I don't be wanting to be long-winded. I just be trying to land the plane. This is, you know, this, this, is, this is good stuff. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely take everything now with a grain of salt like um just just grow like growing up doing the social media stuff it definitely like thickened skin and i mean like ain't nobody said nothing worse than my cousins like like family <laughs> <laughs> like, like hey they, they've trained me through all of this 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 is just entertaining and just you know it's 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 enjoyable at the pause it's you know what i'm saying yeah we know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh uh yeah so i mean yeah that's i ain't got no more questions but um <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah man this, we pretty much life is great man this thing is this thing is one of those things where it's like 
you know, I, I, I try, I have a bad gig and I just try to make the next one good, you know, and you got to do that with the days. You got to do that with your time with people. You got to make these interactions positive with people, man. It's, it's tough out here because we all going through different personal stuff, you know? And like, sometimes I have to literally be like, I can't even look at this, look at anything going on. Cause you know, it just, you just, you, you're in your own space and you know, you forget that it's a it's a meme with Kobe where it says isolation is important. And it's hard to isolate when you wake up and you literally living in the commercial of everybody else. You're getting bombarded with somebody's drum video that you didn't even ask for. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I just, you know, try to stay true to myself regardless, bro. Like I have no absolute anything because everything is always changing, you know? Mm-hmm. But, I don't know, man. I appreciate times where I get to like have these conversations that are a lot low key not on my own platform. Like I like having conversations on other people. I like having conversations. I like playing drums on other people's platforms because I can just do what I do. I'm not trying to like entertain you. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. when I did the Zildjian live thing, I wasn't trying to entertain nobody. <laughs> I was like, I'd be in my mind like, I'm just gonna whoop ass out here. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep. That's just really what I'd be thinking, bro. Honestly, mm-hmm. I'd, be, I'd be in my mind like, I'm like, we about to kill this. And people be looking at me like, bro, you crazy. I'm like, mm, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Cause you know, this music thing is something I've always wanted to do. And I, I just appreciate like, the blessing of just being able to do it and all the people who have like helped me do it, you know, Mm -hmm. be able to be on a Zildjian live after watching countless Zildjian videos from the Zildjian day 98 or 89 with uh, Vinny and all them, bro. I just be taking this thing. I'd be, you know, or even when I played David Letterman, I just remember seeing Buddy Rich on uh, Johnny Carson and, and Dick Cavalier's show. And that fool just be going balls to the wall. And so well, I just thank God for this. Yeah. So let's talk about, cause I've always wanted to know when it comes to like late night, what's that yeah. experience like? Well, I did late night with, um, I did late night. T- well, I don't even think we did it at night. I did uh Dave mm. Letterman. I don't know if that's at nighttime, bro. I think that's in a the day. They, they show it at night, but really? I mean, we walk okay. in there and it was cold as hell. He likes it like freezing. And, um, okay. I just remember seeing Buddy Rich and all them going like berserk and they was in suits since we talking about suits, but yeah, he was going berserk. And I just remember like tripping, like, man, he ain't tripping off messing up. Like I was young and I used to think that to myself. And so when I walked in there, man, the moment my drums were set up, I just took my shirt off because I was going to be on camera. Like I look. And Mm -hmm. so I took my shirt off and niggas was like, it's cold as hell. I'm like, watch this. So we started, we tracked the first one, and then I started seeing Schaefer and J- Anton Fig slide behind the drums like it was church, you know, nigga slide behind the drum. Yep. <laughs> I like, oh yeah, it's, happen- it's happening. And then I do it again. And then I start seeing the camera people adjusting cameras. I'm like, oh yeah, it's happening. We did it again. <laughs> and then I, they started doing it more. And then they was like, this is the final uh, sound check. Man, I was, I mean, every time, all four of those run throughs, I was going ballistic. And then it just started getting like, you know, I just don't care, bro. I don't care if I drop a stick on TV. I don't give, I don't care, bro. Like, I'm like, I'm going to put it out. I'm going to leave it on the stage. And that's Mm -hmm. why I, I, that's how I look at it. I look at it like, you know, this is what I was born to do. And nigga, I'm going to die here. I don't want to put that out there. But nigga, I'm going to die here mentally and physically as far as when it comes to like putting my art out there on the stage. So. That's why when you said, do you have any bad moments? I don't have no bad, no, I don't have any moments of regret is what I'm saying. Cause I just, mm-hmm. I put it out there. You like it. Great. If you hate it. Great. I don't give a fuck nigga. Like that's just how I get down with it. Cause it's like, this is, this is something I always want to do and I'm getting to do it. You know? Yep. Mm-hmm. So, Hey, one of my favorite videos on YouTube to this day is your GQ video. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yo, know, he is dropping a lot of knowledge and like it's helping a lot of people understand drums and like the whip. Yeah, it's part, just yeah. the G the GQ thing was cool because they called me and they was like, Man, we want you to do this thing. I'm like, I'm down. And then they they made me do like an interview type thing, and they was like, You're perfect. 
I didn't know what it was, bro. And we did it. We did this here. We did it here. They came to my house. And um, okay. it was really funny because it was like, man, I woke up and I'd be having bad allergies where I start sneezing. So I start sneezing. I was like, oh, dog, this is the worst day of all time, right? I got these people coming. <laughs> so I took a Benadryl and then uh, my girl gave me a shot. She gave me a shot and a Benadryl and liquor don't go together. Nigga, I was like, like I said, I said in the interview, like, God, Lee. So by the end of it, I'm just like, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, it was fun, man. And like, you know, a lot of those movies, I didn't, uh, you know, a lot of those movies, it's like, dude, Whiplash was funny because they actually called me to play in Whiplash. They called me when that movie was getting made. It's like, they probably called a lot of drummers, but they called me. And they was like, they told me how much they was paying. I'm like, I am definitely not doing it. And Ooh. so, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I ain't doing it. It's a movie. Why I'm doing it for that? You know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. bro, they be getting mad at me, bro. I got so many stories of me just charging people. Because as a musician, it's the only, the music, musicians are the only people in the world like who be like, how much do you want to pay me? You got to, yeah, yeah. Like we yeah. niggas be like, can you do this? And they be, we be like, how much you paying? I'm like what, <laughs> bro? When I call a plumber, I can't give him how much I want to pay him. I gotta be like, how much do you charge? And I gotta pay whatever he charged because I need my toilet fixed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Same with yeah. a lawyer. Same with everything. So it's like I go to the grocery store. I don't be like, <laughs> they don't be like, how much do you want to pay for these pineapples? Like it's like, but we be like, how much you want to pay us? So that's why I say uh, talk about Keisha Cole showing me was important because now I know how much money people get for these deals, you know, and it's probably bigger now, you know? And mm -hmm. so I know how much people make doing movies and how much money it costs to do a movie. So when they throw out, Oh man, we want you to do the final boss solo for absolutely no money. I'm not doing it. Yeah. And they, and they, try, they, they charge in the hot two girl $30,000 just to show up somewhere. Dude, yeah. it's money every, it's money somewhere. It's money yeah. everywhere, but for musicians, bro, they be like, we got money for everything but you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's... We got money for lights. We got money for catering. We got money for uh, the mix. But all oh, the musicians, ah, oh, dog, nah, we ain't got no money for you, bro. I was like, bro, how do you do this without the musicians? Bro, I said this in uh, the Tony Taylor podcast, just talking about when when you asking for money and comp compensation when you playing at church, and that whole thing is its own. You got the left and the right just going back and forth, and I'm like, okay, but you you pay Todd Tribbett to come here and perform, like like it, <laughs> you pay him, and then he leave, and then we got to learn his songs on Sunday for free, like. <laughs> Yo, this yeah, you got this is a deep. This is a deep cop to topic. I remember back in the yeah. day, it was this guy. He used to be like, uh, he what he said. He said disco. He said disco was um was terrible for um, music because they actually made it because it didn't matter who was playing it because uh. everybody could play this. Dooch, 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 dooch. It's like anybody could play that, so it didn't matter who was back there. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it's a similar thing with R and B right now. Like nigga, you can't nigga. I mean, we know, yeah. But the average listener don't care who is back there, bro. They hear, they hear, they hear, they hear the programming and they're they be like, oh, that was great. We'd be like, woo! They'd be like, I can't hear nothing. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So for me, you know, I, I've I've had this conversation and I've oh, I've I've actually been wondering it. I understand it, but I think this topic should be brought up to the community. Is like. Why are we trying to fit acoustic drums in a space that is not built for acoustic instruments? Mm, yeah. Like, why are we all fighting to play in this place where the whole album is programmed? But we all like it's tons of us fighting for this one place, but it's not gate. It's not catered to acoustic instruments, but you're an acoustic instrument. It's just weird to me. I've always wondered that because I'm like, well, you got all the singer songwriters. You got the country guys, you got the rock guys. You can't have a rock concert without instrumentation. Mm -hmm. You can't put the rock band behind the screen and give them a TV to watch of the show. Like it has, it has, you has to be somebody up there physically performing. So it's like, we're fighting to be in a place that's not catering to us. And 
I think I hope that, you know, some of the guys start getting, you know, maybe, you know, maybe they'll hear that and change something. Uh, I don't know what could be changed, but I noticed that from even when I was a young kid looking at Gerald Haywood, you know, mm-hmm. he'd be, I mean, Gerald Haywood was, Gerald Haywood was the guy. I used to see him on TV at least two to three times a week playing with somebody. You know what I mean? And yeah. so I know this, this is not new. This is not new to have a drummer playing behind an R&B or pop artist doing feels that you can hear sporadically in in and out you know you can hear it but as a musician that's why i say are we drummers or musicians because if we musicians we should at least want to do more in the realm of music you know yeah okay yeah we so we're gonna close on the story on like tell us the story behind zildjian live uh you really want to hear that story? Um, <laughs> Zildjian Live. <laughs> hmm. So the story behind Zildjian Live is they asked me to come do it. And um, they was like, Spud's about to do all the music. I was like, sick. I know Spud since God's Property, Daniel Jones, and he's playing my boy Lamont. And I know Spud since I was really, really, really young. Um, and... Um, I'm like, that's one of my boys. So anytime he he's doing anything, I'm down. And Mm -hmm. so Spud was doing the music and he was like, what you want to play to? I was like, I was like, just make something. (laughs) I was like, just make, (laughs) just make anything. And, uh, yeah, he just, he made me some, you know, people, they ain't gonna never give me nothing straight. So he started giving me uh, no diddy. And then he started, (laughs) so he gave me something that's going in and out of some weird time signature. Come here, boy. Uh Uh-huh. And so uh, I just, you know, I barely listened to it. I, he sent me something. I was like, oh, that's cool. I barely listened. I kind of like, you know, it's hard to listen to music on the phone when you're traveling and stuff. I was like, whatever. And so then, like, it was getting closer to time. I know Blaze Branch. He's in the trolls. Mm-hmm. And then uh, uh, so so then Zildjian Live was getting closer. And uh, what happened? Blaze, you got to stop. Come here. Baby, you gotta be quiet, boogie. Okay, so then back to it. So like, um, so he asked me to do it. I get closer to the time, and I, uh, I just started shedding the music a little bit, like not a lot. Like I never practiced to it, and I got to the place, and I just learned it. I was learning it in front of everybody, so that's what made it all weird. Cause like a lot of other guys, they already had their their songs, and they brought their songs. You know, they were songs they already were doing or they recorded. They were on their record. So mm-hmm. this was something I never played to or played. And I never played with Mono Neon in that capacity. I never played with Ghost Note in that capacity. And they're way across the room. Like, you know, I like the bass player being next to me. He's okay. in front of me to diagonally across the room. You know what I mean? He's not yeah. close to me. So that was another thing. I'm I'm the when I walk in there, the first thing I do when I get to a studio is I try even stage, I try to get it to sound like the drum sound with no in ears. You know what I mean? I'd be mm-hmm. like, take the gates off. First thing, take the gates off. Don't be panning the drums. We don't hear drums like this, you know, without our ears. Don't pan the drums. Um, no gates. And make these drums sound like they really sound. Don't have them all compressed, sounding all weird, you know? So that was the first thing. And then after that, I could get and dive into the song. So we started playing a little bit. And then he was like, we kind of start rehearsing in front of people. And so it was moments where we started tracking it and then people was like, that was killing. <laughs> and I would just stop. <laughs> I, would just, oh, I would just stop. Yeah. They, they were like, hey, why'd you stop? I was like, cause I could have did something sicker. And they was like, <laughs> they was like, you know, they was having fun in there. It was Aaron in there. Bearded was in there. Um, Brian Carter was in there. Uh, it was all the homies in there. And um, Wendell was in there. And it was just like, it was just a, a fun time, bro. And then uh, I did it, and it was just what it was. I'll be leaving it on the floor, bro. I don't be really tripping. And I was like, right, I think the week before, I cut my hair. Mm-hmm. Like, I was going through some real, I don't even know what I was going through. I just wanted to see my face. So I just okay. cut my hair. I just cut my hair right before, so it was really trippy. Like, mm-hmm. when you have hair for a long time and you cut it off, it's such a different feeling, bro. It's like, because mm-hmm. in your mind, in your mind, you're trying to see, like, I think I was in my mind trying to figure out if people 
were like looking at my drumming or my hair because mm -hmm. I started noticing that people will send me videos of people who look like me. And I was like, this is really weird. And so one day I just like out of nowhere just cut my hair. And so that I was going through that. That was like I was insecure. I was like, what the fuck is this? You know what I mean? Just because it was like, yeah, it's such a different. I don't you never I don't think you can you understand it just because you never had locks. But yeah, yeah, I've never cut your locks, bro. Especially I had them since I was 18. Like, yeah. You see your face different. And you're just like, this is weird. <laughs> like it's hard to explain. Your clothes look different on you. Everything just looks different um, and feels different. So my hair, my hair, I cut my hair and I just got there. And um, hella drummers, Tony Royster, all them was there. And we just kicked it and I just did my thing. And then um, one story that people don't know about this is at that studio, mm -hmm. Jay Weinberg was in Studio A recording for Slipknot. So... Oh, he like when I went in there, I walked in the back and I went to this area and I seen Jay secretly in there. Like it's Zildjian party. So you would think Jay would just walk in and Jay walked in. Jay walked up to me. He's like, come here. And I go to the cut. <laughs> I go to the cuts and he they bro. Slipknot was fully set up in Studio A. So he had the, the drum set from the black album from the Metallica record with that metal snare. And he let me play it for a second. I walked out of there and went right back in that room. It was crazy. Yo. <laughs> it was out. And like me and Aaron Spears, that was when we, Hadass is my photographer. Um, we know he, Hadass takes photos of him too. Mm -hmm. And she was there and she took me in the last photo of me and Aaron that we got together outside. Cause it was like, cause I think, I don't know if Hadass met Aaron through me. I think she might've, or maybe DW or some something sort of, but she was there. We took a picture. And this whole thing is so surreal, bro. Like, yeah, you have so many people you grow up with, and you know, when you're young, we had church dudes. I remember he was playing with Gideon Band and like all the homies from DC, like Warren and everybody. And so, like, to sit here and then next thing you know, Jacopo was right there from Italy. I met him when I was with Eros. He came and we went and had beers in Rome. And like, so a bunch of friends, but yeah, just the just to trip out how we can go from playing in like a church thing and mm -hmm. then next thing, spot, you know, and then next thing you know, we're on this level where he's playing with Toto. It's surreal, bro. That's why I'm telling you, sometimes I'll be just straight crying, bro, because I'll be like, Why is God doing this? What is this? Like, what is like my yeah. grandmother? My grandmother is my mom's stepmother, it's Tony Austin. My mom's grand my grandmother is my mom's stepmother. So my mom's actual mom killed herself when my mom was 12. She fucking wow. overdosed with pills and liquor. So my grandfather, who I knew my grandfather, remarried. And he remarried a girl, a lady who was over, re, she was super churched out and she played piano. And that's who I know as my grandmother. So like, uh. I might've never even been a drummer if my mom's mom never, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you sit here, and you, you sit here, I remember, you know, playing with Tim Williams, you know. And we we used to play all the time when he was 14 with Morris Mingo. He used to go to Cincinnati, play on them James McCray gospel records and play with Titus and all them. Mike Mike Reed, I, I used to hang out with Mike Reed when we were real young. And all these dudes, and you just see them just blow up. You just be like, what is this? Man. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just be, I, so I feel blessed to, you know. That's why when I get in these spaces, bro, I treat it like church because it is church, man. You be mm -hmm. having like a spiritual moment in there with not only people you don't know, but people you do know from all these different spaces. And you could just um you could just be yourself. You can you can mess up, you can be vulnerable. And I think the vulnerability is what makes all this stuff special. Yeah, most definitely. Yo, uh, what we at here? Where we at? I'm a, I'm gonna mute some of this. <laughs> mono man and it's crazy because mono playing odd meters is so crazy because you never hear him playing odd meters and so i'm like i'm like i don't know what this model Real, bro. When I be listening back to this stuff, it be feeling like I'm not even, that's not even me. 
man. It's out. And then Zildjian, I've been with them, little Aaron. I've been with Zildjian since I was 10. You've been in, you was endorsed by Zildjian at 10? Yeah, I was like turning 10. I was at a drum store out here in San Francisco and, um, I, man, bro, I never told you how I met Dennis Chambers, bro. This, like, that story isn't, I never told you that, bro. I got to tell you the story. Oh, yeah. We, we, <laughs> my, this ain't going to cut off till two hours. So we okay. Good. <laughs> so, okay. So, my mom, my mom used to, like, my mom and my grandmother used to have this issue because she used to feel like I was too one dimensional. She didn't want me to be no dude all in the house all the time. So, she would take me to, go skateboarding you know i'm playing drums my grandma was like dude he's a drummer don't make him skate you know so i used to go skateboarding i used to um do graffiti a lot <laughs> and so man my mom used to be like okay he wants to play music i'm about to take him to the club so she used to take me to the club on wednesday night we used to call it wednesday night date night mm -hmm. and so bro Man, I used to go to this club called Kimball's East in Oakland. I seen Sheila E there. I seen Vinny Caliuta with John Patatucci. I seen Yellow Jackets, Will Kennedy. I seen Al Foster with Nancy Wilson. I seen Najee. I seen, man, Poojie Bell playing with Rochelle Farrell before he ever did Call Tyrone with Erica. Bro, all that. I used to see everybody there. Man, and one day, Poojie Bell let me play the drums because he saw I was a young kid in the club. He let me play on like a break. Mm -hmm. And then the club was like, damn, this little kid can play. And so, like, I I kept coming, so they knew me. Dennis Chambers come after, like, I watched In the Pocket and Serious Moves. I'm, like, nine years old. I'm, like, I see Dennis. I'm, like, Mr. Dennis Chambers, I love you. Like, we all, every church drummer was inspired, like, hell by that Serious Moves thing. And so, <laughs> so, um, so, man, he was, like, you want to play? I was, like, what? Yes, but I'm nine. <laughs> Yeah. So, like, I think he started on a Monday, and he was all the way to the next Sunday, Monday to Saturday probably. Man, he let me sit in before his show started every day. Bro, it was crazy. That's, he let me man. just start off with a solo. He just like, nobody, on, just me on drum start solo. Blah, 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 at Kimball's for like a whole week. That weekend, that he took me to MI to do, to do the same thing at his drum clinic. It was at MI. And so I went home. And like, I went home and I was like on cloud nine cause I just met my hero and he just let me just play drums the whole week. And bro, he sent me a hundred pair of sticks with a hundred pair of Dennis Chamber sticks with my name on them also. And <laughs> you know, when you young, a hundred pairs yeah. of sticks is crazy. So he yeah. sent me all these sticks from Regal when he was with Regal. And then he sent me a box of symbols. 20k custom ride like his symbols bro he just sent me his symbols 12 inch hi-hats like dennis symbols bro he sent me okay next week happened drum world um drum world was a store in san francisco the guy one of the the one of the guys who worked at drum drum world was is his name is scott garrison garrison is was the drum tech for tony williams he mm -hmm. now works at dw that's just the background of this store it's like a legend music store right Mm -hmm. Man, they was having an opening. All these drummers came. Tony Williams came. All these drummers was in there. And you know, I'm the dude. I'm acting like it's Nam show. So I'm in there playing. I'm I'm baby boy drummer. Right? <laughs> so I'm playing. This lady walks up to me. She was like, "I think you're the little kid who I just sent sticks to, Carol Collado." She was like, "My grandmother's there." She's like, "I want to talk to whoever." She talked to my grandma. Get and she endorsed me that day. Right? We're regal. And then I met the guy that same day from Pearl. His name was Scott Miller. And Scott Miller went home and gave me an endorsement with Pearl. And he hooked me up with Johnny D. And I just turned 10. And Johnny D was the a &R who signed like Dave Weckl and Vinny and Dennis and all of them. Johnny D is like a legend dude in uh -huh. the industry. And he endorsed me to Zildjian when I was 10. And I've been with them ever since, bro. And so, hey, yeah, <laughs> so that so that so to see this to see this is uh to see to see this right now on the screen is crazy because it's like the other day they sent me like a thing I was like 30 years 
of 30 year endorsement. I'm like, damn, I've been with y'all for 30 years. That's insane, bro. That's yeah, that's insane. <laughs> it's insane. That, you you got a legendary story right there. Man, is, so many surreal moments, bro. Yo, that no, that's man. And and, and I'm be honest. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, now you said what you said earlier about you know the, that t- that term legendary gets spread on a lot. I'm I'm being a hundred percent real with you, bro. This is one of my surreal moments. Just getting to uh-huh. even talk with you, bro. Like, Allegedly. and it, it's like it's it's like a full circle thing happening. Now I I'm telling you, I gotta share the screen with this. I need some background on this. I will get crucified okay. by my subscribers if I don't talk okay. about. The legendary gospel chop shed between you and Tony Brewster. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, man. It was a that day was crazy because man, that was that moment, bro. Like when I was, I was so like back in that time, bro. I remember Ronald Bruner and Eric Moore they used to call me. And they'd be like, What are you doing? That like right when I was doing Keisha, like at that moment, I was just making beats for hella rappers, like mm-hmm. hella rappers, bro, around town. And so they was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just making beats. And they was like, nah, man, you supposed to be playing these drums. So the first video with Gospel Chops when I was in my basement, I was living in the hood, like for real in the hood. And he comes and picks me up. See that girl in the background? That's my son's mom. Okay. And so like I was living in the hood and um, man, I was a hood booger. And like that day I got kicked out of my place. It was like really? I had a, yeah, I got kicked out of my uh, my spot I was living at, and she came with me, and it was just a bad, it was a bad, it was a, I mean, I ain't got no excuses, but it was a bad day, and we were playing all day before this, and I just, man, just going in there and just did what I did, bro, just let it hang, because, you know, we didn't know that it was going to go extra, bro, viral wasn't a thing yet. And we wasn't mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, it's going to go viral. Like, me and Tony got videos. You okay? We got videos after video of us being together. We got videos of us hanging out at PASIC. We got videos of us with Sput and Cleon. We got videos, a lot of them. So this ain't our first time. So, okay. um, yeah, Eric was there. And that dude, uh, Gerald Forrest, was just trying to put together this thing. He was like, man, I got to do this thing with y'all because it's going to be an important moment. And, bro, we just never knew what it was going to do. But the thing that's crazy about this video is, man, this is how the Mars Volta even heard about me. Oh, okay. They saw this video and they was like, who is he? And they, bro, that was back in the day where they had no internet like that. I didn't have a social media like that. So um, they looked at the yellow pages. Mm. They looked at the yellow pages and found my grandmother's house, bro, and called the house phone. They was like, is your, are you Thomas Pridgen's mom or something? They was like, no, nah, I'm his grandma. They was like, well, the Mar, this is, we're so and so from the Mars Volta. We're trying to get in contact. And that's how I got the gig because they were trying to find me off this video. It's wow. crazy, bro. It's crazy because like me and Tony been knowing each other for so long. And what's crazy is that like all of us, we all like, I mean, our parents all have known each other. Like, I knew Tony's dad. He knew my grandmother. We know Eric's dad. Uh, God rest his soul. His mom, and even Ronald and Tone and and Justin Brown and even Carlin from Shed Tracks. We mm-hmm. all are the same age, and we all been around each other forever. And so, even Aaron Spears. So, like, we've always had a friendly competition. Like, we always been like, nigga, I'm about to whoop Tony. Oh, nigga, I'm gonna whoop <laughs> Ronald. Oh, nigga, I'm about to whoop Eric. Oh. And it ain't never really died down, nigga. We still like that. We, <laughs> we still be trying to get at each other. And I think, I think it's, I think it's really dope because it's like, you know, we we built a sort of camaraderie and we've changed just the way people play music. I remember when we first did this. This nigga Chris Day was like, none of these niggas ever gonna get no gig. I called that nigga. <laughs> Called that nigga. I'm like, nigga, I got a gig, nigga. He was like, well, you got a gig. I'm like, bro, you don't get it. And in hindsight, now everybody want to play like this. You know what I yeah. mean? And yeah. I had a homie who hit me the other day. He's like, we got to do a Netflix thing with this man. And but we gonna do some sort of Netflix type of thing where we talk about the influence of this. I think it'd be really dope. I talked to Tony about it and Eric, and I talked to Tony a lot, man. 
I talk to Eric all the time. I called Eric the other day. I was like, man, try to play this. He's like, nigga, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so we still got the same energy where we be like, still like, you know, friendly competition, man. We all grew up with each other and we all want the best for each other. We want everybody to get better. So I, I'm like growing up watching this. I've, uh, the, every time when I, when I practice and stuff like that, like this, I, in my, in my age group, like we've never seen speed around the kit like this. Like once again, like before I saw Buddy Rich and all them, this is y'all are pretty much what our Buddy Riches and stuff is. And I'm like, they, they, it's it's a different level when I be watching these uh these gospel chop videos with y'all. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's... we all was just watching Dennis, bro. And even if you look at like the Buddy Rich Memorial with mm -hmm. Vinny, like we were like, we was like, Vinny is getting on Dave. No, nah, Dave getting on Vinny. Like, it's so many videos of him, bro. It's a video uh, Justin sent me where Vinny and Dave was was trading with a on a with a band. We was tripping. It was two drummers. We was tripping, but <laughs> like they had the same type of thing. Like you know, mm -hmm. just get in a room and make it happen. They just didn't have cameras, like. Yeah, the cameras and just the social media aspect when it start hitting YouTube and it just changed things, man. A lot of people that's Marcus uh, Phillips and Dave. That's my boy right there. But like, um, I don't know, man. It's, it's just crazy, bro. We didn't know what we were doing, but we also, you know, we knew we were doing something because I used to look at mine and drummer, and I'm like, man, I didn't see a face that looked like mine. I'm like, man, they don't care about us, bro. And and at the same time, you know, not trying to diss on mine and drummer. Or any of the companies, but they are re they're really late to the party. Cause bro, we was like twenty two. I've been playing since I was ten. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, I think sometimes people don't gravitate towards you till you doing what they want you to do. So like, mm -hmm. you know, like Chris Dave didn't get a minor drummer cover until he was doing like Maxwell or something. I'm like Maxwell, I'm like, bro, yeah. we've been knowing him from Kitty Garrett. Like you can't get it for what you actually kill it on. You got to get it for. Oh, the Mars Volts. It got to be a band they like. It got to be a, oh, it's a rock project. I got you. It's like, nah, dog. Like, that's why I don't really give too much credit to like a lot of the stuff, especially. Please, please, man. <laughs> Just that aspect. I got to get off because this little boy, he like, bro, I need my, I got to take him to the park in, in a second. But like, yeah. um, I don't give too much credence to that kind of, that kind of stuff because. Oh, dog. Okay, I gotta get off, Josh. He he telling me he All need right. his daddy time. <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate you being on here, man. Y'all oh, make yeah, sure man. to follow Tony. I'm saying I'm about to say Tony. Tony I'm on Tony Pridgen, bro. Tony Pridgen. Tony Pridgen. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, appreciate you, Thomas, man, for doing this. I that's, love you, man. We can do a been... round table with a bunch of guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean. Are you going to Nam this year or well, next year? Uh, I want to. I'm trying to make it out there. I'm want to, man. I mean, we're gonna have we're gonna have people uh, people getting weird on us, but let's do it. Uh oh. <laughs> people be getting weird at Nam show, bro. I seen a fight almost at. <laughs> I seen a fight. I seen somebody try to swing at uh, Kevin Hayden, bro. He made content about that for years. <laughs> I only saw the picture. I didn't. I didn't even. <laughs> That's that, man. That's a lot. Not you know what, <laughs> bro. I'm gonna have you in tears, bro. He got swung on, and then he went and snitched to the cops, bro. I'm like, bro, all that talking that you snitching, bro. You gotta cut it out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I Life, think, bro. Yeah. I think I can get that round table. Like, I I think I can make that happen with Sweetwater a lot easier than now. Honestly, I love it. Let's do it. But, uh, yep. That has been another episode of the In and Out of Pocket Podcast. <laughs> we are here. <laughs> Man, I love you, Josh. Thank you for yeah. letting me get on, bro. I've been trying to... I had to get my mic together first. Oh, yeah. Get my life well, together in here. But you got the say, Elgato mic. That's Elgato, ain't it? Yeah, I got the old Elgato system. Shout out to Elgato. Y'all didn't give me shit. But thank y'all for making it at least. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yeah, this was this was this is going down as one of the best interviews as, as well. And uh, yeah, everybody that's watching, make sure y'all subscribe. Make sure y'all hit that like button. This will be premiering obviously. And uh, yeah, 
be on the lookout for some more interviews and some uh, this is we we finna do a lot of stuff man oh, all right he got to go his son his son want to share care y'all. <laughs> i love you man take care of yourself bro you too man all right mm-hmm. yep how do we get out of here i gotta end the recording first oh that <laughs>